May the peace of the Lord be with you all. As we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Come, let us now listen to the Word of God. May 5, 2024 Sixth Sunday of Easter A reading from the Acts of the Apostles On Peter's arrival Cornelius met him, and falling at his feet, worshipped him. But Peter made him get up, saying, Stand up, I am only a mortal. Then Peter began to speak to them, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is The Lord has revealed to the nations His saving power. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous things. His right hand and His holy arm have gotten Him victory. The Lord has revealed to the nations His saving power. The Lord has made known His victory, He has revealed His vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered His steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations His saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth, break forth into joyous song and sing praises. The Lord has revealed to the nations His saving power. A reading from the first letter of John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God, everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way, God sent His only Son into the world so that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we loved God but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. The Word of the Lord A reading from the Holy Gospel, according to John. Jesus said to His disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you, abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask Him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord Gospel Reflection Jesus says, You are my friends if you do what I command you. Is that the measure of true friendship? That we do what our friend commands us to do? That depends upon which friend we are speaking about. There are many images we use for God. We call Him Father, Savior, Master, Lord, King, Redeemer, Spirit and Friend. When it comes to God as our Divine Friend, 
it is important to understand the nature of that friendship properly. Jesus' friendship is not one that simply makes us buddies. Friendship with our Lord is not the same as a friendship between two equals. He is God. And because He is God, our friendship with Him takes on unique characteristics that are not present in other friendships. With that said, there could be no greater friend than the Lord Himself. Among humans, our friendships have various foundations. It could be that two people have mutual interests and they enjoy engaging in those interests together. It could be that two people have spent much pleasant time together since childhood. Or it could be that two people have endured some difficulty together and that experience has bonded them together. But according to St. Thomas Aquinas, friendship in its purest form is based on just one thing, mutual charity. Charity is the form of love that is purely selfless. It's a way of relating to another in which a person's sole focus is the good of the other. It is not based on one's own self-interests. It's not a matter of, what do I get out of it? In 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 to 8, St. Paul defines the love of charity this way, love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful, it does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end, as for tongues, they will cease, as for knowledge, it will come to an end. This is not only the definition of charity, it is also the only foundation for true friendship. When you consider all of these qualities of charity, you will find that God relates to us in each of these ways. For that reason, God offers us the purest friendship possible. Whether or not we reciprocate these qualities to God will determine the depth of the bond of friendship that we establish with Him. But there is more. When we love God, we must love Him in a way that is proper and proportionate to who God is. For example, if we offer charity to God, we seek to fulfill only God's interests and rejoice in the truth of who He is. Thus, the charity we offer to God comes in the form of worship. He is God and is worthy of worship, adoration, surrender, trust and perfect obedience. When it is God we are loving, the very essence of the person we love requires these responses. One beautiful and consoling thing to recognize with this form of charity given to God is that it also establishes a true friendship with God. When we offer our worship to God, we are in a position to receive the very life of God in return. And the giving of ourselves, coupled with the reception of the life of God, establishes a bond of holy friendship that will transform us, unite us with Him and fulfill us to perfection. Friendship with God makes us one with Him and opens us to receive everything that He shares with us, namely, His very Self. Reflect, today, upon the invitation Jesus has offered you to enter into a true friendship with Him. This means that God becomes the center of your life. It means that you seek to give yourself, selflessly and without reserve, to Him who is deserving of all your love. It means you choose worship and obedience to perfection. The reward of such love is that you are able to enter into a bond that is so holy, so pure and so fulfilling that it completes you, enabling you to become who you were meant to be. Let us pray. My God and true friend, you offer me everything in life. You offer me your perfect love, given fully and without reserve. I pray that I will reciprocate that depth of love and offer to you all that you deserve. I offer you my love, worship and obedience, dear Lord. May this mutual love form a bond that will never end. Jesus, I trust in you. 
Amen. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share it with your friends and family, so that they may also be blessed as you are. May God bless you.